Joining us now, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, America's team, Jerry Jones. In 1989, the Dallas Cowboys were 1-15. They had a new owner, and for the first time in 29 years, the coach was not Tom Landry. Arkansas businessman Jerry Jones had bought the only NFL team he ever wanted. He fired Tom Landry and traded the team's only star, Herschel Walker. Three years later, Jones and Jimmy Johnson won a Super Bowl with perhaps the best quarterback in the game, the best running back, and the best receiver. Oh, yes, and Troy Aikman, Emmitt Smith, and Michael Irvin were backed up by the NFL's number one defense. Today, the Cowboys are the most valuable franchise in professional sports and the favorite to return to the Super Bowl in January. And I'm pleased to have back on our show. Welcome. Thank you, Joe. May I look at the ring for a second? I just want to show America if they haven't seen one. Can you come in a kind of close here? This is... How bad did you want this? Well, it's, it's a symbol of uh, having arrived and having gotten there, and there's no describing how bad we wanted it. Uh, I'm, I'm reminded, though, of Frank DeFord's description of it. He said, that ring looks like a class ring with steroids. <laughs> it's pretty big. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, thank you for letting us show that. Who's going to be the quarterback this weekend? I think that if uh, Bernie Kosar, who uh, we're thrilled to have, not just for this weekend, but uh, certainly for our pursuit of the Super Bowl, uh, I think if he can continue to progress like he has the la uh, next couple of days, he should start. Yeah. You, you're paying him, what, about a million dollars for the rest of the year for that's, eight games. That's you know? right on it, one yeah. million dollars. I mean, I read today in USA Today where Troy Aikman said, or his agent said, he was a little bit concerned because you'd wrap this deal up in a, in a day and he's still trying to negotiate his deal. Well, I think we're looking at uh, the result of an aggressive uh, uh, action on my part and our part and the Cowboys part, uh, we didn't have all day to think about this. Uh, one of the things that I do, and sometimes it's misinterpreted, we really do turn the lights out, so to speak, uh, at, at our facilities. Uh, we really watch our pennies. And when you do that, when you have the mentality of that, then you have the mentality to uh, step out when the time comes and the timing is right and make a move like Bernie Kosar financially. And that's how you get to do that. I had a guy one time when I drove up to my airplane in a five-year-old Bronco. He said, this doesn't make sense. It contradicts each other. And I said, no, it's how you have an airplane when you're willing to drive a five-year-old Bronco. <laughs> Let me make this point, though. You have said that Troy Aikman will be the highest paid player in professional football. No question about it. I think, uh, uh, in my view, that is the case. You see, Troy is our, uh, is our franchise quarterback. I, I can't look into the future. Uh, for any length of time and not see Troy Aikman as the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. So that Troy's deal is not just for 93, it's for the next 10 years, if you will. And during this next year period, next 10 year period, there's no doubt in my mind, Troy would be the highest paid player in football. Emmett Smith, any regrets about the way that was handled, the way it took place, and the kind of pressure you found yourself under? Well, I think you'd have to speculate pretty much or, or use hindsight uh, to change things. Uh, I wish he had gotten in earlier. I don't accept the fact that just not having him here caused us to lose our first two ball games. But did you get a little nervous after the second game saying, I better do something quick here? Nervous is not the word for it. Uh, uh, what we was got, the word I for got it? personally inside frantic. <laughs> uh, I knew after we had lost to Buffalo, right here, uh, last play in this end zone. I knew that our team, our coaching staff, all of our fans had to have in it. That wasn't the mentality uh, for the first two ball games when we lined up against Washington or Buffalo. But by the time we had lost those first two, Emmett became the reason why we had done that, and so it was imperative to get him in. Now, Emmett, of course, had a lot to do with the period of time we didn't have him sign. There was very legitimate, hard negotiating going on. I'm very pleased that we got him signed. We got him signed on a basis that we can live with it in the future under a salary cap. When you did, it cause any friction between you and Jimmy Johnson? No, none at all. None at all. Uh, Jimmy uh, was uh, very supportive of uh, my position during this time. Certainly, in his shoes, he wants all of the players on the field and in the best shape they can be in at all times. But Jimmy understands that uh, we were working real hard to make Emmett's contract palatable for us over the next four years when we're going to have a salary cap in the NFL. 
Uh, we have to have the room to have Troy Aikman, Emmett here, Smith, here, Michael Irvin. Oh, the argument against that that some say, and, and you're the businessman, they say you can't worry about the salary cap now. I mean, put your best team on the field. You've got a chance to have back-to-back -back Super Bowls and don't risk that. Don't upset that chemistry and worry about a salary cap five years from now. Well, the verdict's still out because uh, we may have been able to do both. We may have been able to very uh, 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 well manage our future, i.e. the salary cap, Plus, we've still got a shot at the Super Bowl this year, too, so that if we can do that, we've had our cake and eat it, too. Tom Landry was here, and, and I asked him in, in, about the effort and what you had done here. Characterize for me how you have rebuilt this franchise. What's the secret? Well, I think the key word is aggressive. Uh, the, the biggest favor that uh, uh, circumstances have ever done a fan of the Dallas Cowboys was caused me through my intoxication for wanting to be involved in the NFL and Dallas Cowboys to extend myself the way that I did. That extend was a, yourself in what way? That, financially? That was an overreach financially as well as with my time and with my reputation. You had to leverage yourself to pay $140 million so that not, you'd be the owner of this team? No, not leverage. The, uh, what I did was in paying $140 million for the club and the stadium, I probably put more dollars on the line to be involved in professional sports than anyone ever has. Plus, there was a tremendous visibility. There was a perception that uh, 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 this guy from Arkansas had really messed up. He right. hadn't handled things well. Jeffro. My father called me about three months after I'd been involved and said, son, I don't know if you ever want to do anything else, but if you do, you better make this work. <laughs> He's got, you've got too many people looking at you. You have to be a success. We burned our bridges. Jimmy burned his bridges when he came into the NFL. If you recall, uh, there was nobody around here that knew anything about professional football. Here's a college coach, untested in pro ball. Uh, I, I took over the general manager's job. So no one uh, really had a lot of confidence in us. After about the first 18 months, though, we started feeling that confidence. But that commitment, that putting yourself over the barrel, was probably the biggest contribution to our being successful in getting to the Super Bowl. When How much is this franchise worth today? If I had $200 million, could I get it? No. Uh, 250. There are two parts to this franchise. Number one uh, are the Dallas Cowboys, the team. And the other part is the stadium that you're sitting yeah. in. Uh, a part of the purchase that I paid $140 million for was for the stadium corporation. And uh, certainly, uh, I believe that it has... Uh, increased in value dramatically, the stadium I'm talking about, and of course the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, the richest the sports franchise in the world. Well, I think we have uh, the, the kind of visibility, and I, I think some of the, uh, the best visibility there is in sports. Uh, it's perceived as a winner. It has the great tradition. Uh, plus, I'm committed, and uh, Jimmy's committed. We're all committed to making it a productive team right today. I think when you combine the tradition with the success we're having, plus people's perception that we're going to be successful in the future, you come up with what we know as the Dallas Cowboys today. America's team again, you think? Oh, I think so. Uh, I think all you've got to do is look at the ratings. I think if you look at the uh, uh, NFL sales, the memorabilia sales, right now in the NFL, one-third of all the merchandise being sold for all the NFL is Dallas Cowboy merchandise. What value would you put on the franchise, then, including the stadium? I don't know. I, I, I certainly think that uh, it's... it's uh, uh, worth considerably more than the new expansion franchises are worth, and I know that our stadium to replace it uh, would cost a couple hundred million dollars. So uh, it's hard to put a value on something. When to replace this stadium is two hundred million right there. That's correct. And, and you and own the, the stadium, and we own the uh, all of the rights and leases to right. the stadium. Right. I think that that the point is that you really don't need to worry about that unless you're thinking about selling. And when I bought this club, I didn't buy it to make money at all. This is your uh, life work, right? I did not buy it uh, to, though, have my financial head handed to me. Uh, somewhere in between there is being involved in the Dallas Cowboys. I could have taken the dollars uh, that I put on the line, uh, committed my total time, which I've done, added the risk dollars in there, and could have made much better financial investments. But the combination of all of them, I think, have helped us be a winning team. But it wouldn't have brought you the visibility. It wouldn't have brought you the excitement. It wouldn't have brought you that thrill of owning a sports franchise, which a lot of very wealthy people and successful people and driven people want to do. Well, I think there's a difference. Ego. There's a there's a difference uh, in a couple of things. Number one, I separate owning from managing. Uh, there are a lot of owners of professional franchises that don't manage on a day-to-day -day basis that franchise. They could and do a great job of it. They just aren't inclined to, don't want to take the time to, or want someone else to do it. So that ownership is one thing, 
managing it is another. Uh, what I had to do to make the commitment I made was uh, get it straight in my mind to do both. Let me go back to Landry for a second, a couple of, of controversial things. One, do you regret now that it was handled so badly and that he at least was found out on television, whatever the reason, and have you personally apologized to him and said, you know, let's heal this wound? Well, I think that uh, 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 if I had it to do over again, uh, I might have the night that I made the announcement that uh, I had bought the club, uh, that Coach Landry was no longer going to be the coach, and that Jimmy Johnson was going to be the coach. I think that I might not have announced that I had bought the club or announced that Jimmy was going to be the coach. May have just focused on the fact that Coach Landry, his career, and wasn't going to be with the team any longer. The facts are that I couldn't stand there and do that because I, we had to make the statement that I was going to own and manage the club. And then the next question was, who basically is going to arrive? I think, though, that uh, there's no way around saying that uh, that was an F minus as far as a grade on a job done at that time. I think, though, that, that uh, the reason that I did, the reason that I visited with Coach Landry about the change was because of the reason that I got in the NFL and bought the Dallas Cowboys. I respect him so much. He's one of the greatest sports people, much less football coach, sports people there is. He really did take sports and football and transcend not only being competitive, but he made it something and made it stand for something beyond that, a higher cause, a bigger being. He stands for that with a lot of people. Very few people in sports have ever been able to utilize the game and utilize the people's interest in sports to carry it to another cause. He's done it. I saw you as he left and you were coming up. You two stopped to chat for a few minutes, what'd you say? Well, I basically, uh, we talked about last Sunday and we talked about the day that we had and, and uh, the uh, interest that our fans had and what was going on. We talked about the fact that the ratings, television, I did, I mentioned to it, were higher for the halftime than they were for the football <laughs> game. And that's yes. a tribute to Coach Landry. All right. Jimmy Johnson, two young men from Arkansas, played football together, friends. One went on to become a coach, one went on to become a millionaire, then to become an owner. The other had a very successful college coaching career. They come back together and they produce a Super Bowl champion together. There are stories about conflict uh, that are essentially part of what happens when two people, very competitive, do something together. What's the truth? Well, I think you've got to go back to the initial perception, and that was that uh, when I made Jimmy the coach at the Cowboys, it was because we were cozy uh, friends, confidence, if you will. And so that was a nice little cozy arrangement to be the coach. That wasn't the case. We're friends, but not confidence. Uh, we had led different lives over the last 25 years since we left school. Uh, we were both married when we were in school, so we were roommates on the road. But we do enjoy a friendship. Uh, but more than anything, uh, I wanted him to be the coach of the Cowboys because my acquaintance with him over the years told me we could work together. If I were going to be involved in every decision, if I were going to be involved on a day-to-day -day basis, I had to have somebody that I could work with and get back-to-back -back with. We eliminated the bureaucracy, that, and, and I'm not knocking it, but we don't have any bureaucracy in the Dallas Cowboys. It's the coach, and it's me, and we make the decisions. So we have dialogue every day. Now, the point that I'm saying is that our relationship is better today than it was when we started back in 1989. And why is that? Because you've won together? We've, and not only that, we've had some hard times together. I knew after 1989, when we won one football game, that I'd made the right decision. Sure, we debate. Sure, we have uh, different interests uh, that sometimes clash. And no, we don't uh, uh, dilly-dally around in expressing ourselves. That's one of the benefits of having known each other as long as we have. The good news is, is how well it works. Yeah, it, it, and it's reflected in the Super Bowl. Are you confident you're going to win the Super Bowl again? No, I'm, I'm not confident. I'm, I'm, uh, I think that we probably have the best chance to go to a Super Bowl that we will ever have uh, looking into the future. We have our defense is coming on strong. Uh, we have Troy Aikman playing at his highest level ever. Uh, of course, Emmett and our team is together. So just looking at our team, I can't look at other teams. We are better than we were last year. A better team. Yes, we're better than we were last year. And so 
Why are you better? Is it because yeah. you've had a year's experience or because of something else? We've got one of the youngest teams, if not the sure. youngest team. I think second or third football. youngest, right? We've got more people uh, under the age of 30 than any team in pro football. We played in some great games in 1992. We won most of them. But those were tremendous experience for these young players. Yes, they're more experienced. To have won a Super Bowl gives you a level of confidence. You add that to the fact that our talent level is actually higher this year than it was last year. You add that to the fact that Troy Aikman is playing at a higher level than he's played. Emmett Smith is more accomplished than he's been. So I think all of those pluses add up. But let me warn about this. The best team in the NFL doesn't always win football games. And history shows that one time after the other. And I r remind you also that the last time that a team with the same coach won back-to-back -back Super Bowls was like 78 or 79 with the Steelers. Well, and I San would, Francisco didn't have the same team coach when they went back to back. Well, I would remind you that there's never been a team lose its first two ball games And then win the Super Bowl. And win to the Super Bowl. Did but, you think uh, about that during those pressure moments? one of the great sports stories yeah. uh, and the things that make great sports stories are to do something no one has ever done before. Back to Johnson. What is it he has? What makes Johnson so good? Well, I think Jimmy, uh, first of all, is very focused. Uh, what I'd say. And, and, and think about that a minute. Most of the men that I've known that have been successful are focused people. Uh, Jimmy's very intelligent. Uh, a lot of people don't realize how accomplished he is, especially on the defensive side of the ball. That had a great bearing on me selecting him as coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Because he's a smart defensive strategist. Defensive strategist. Uh, but by the way, no one knows the X's and O's of the offensive side of the ball any better than Jimmy. And this team is known more for, it's, it, as good as the defense is, it, it's known for superstars on the offensive and side. This offense. Jimmy's very confident in himself so that he can uh, have talent around him that, uh, for, for that matter, he can delegate and not be concerned about protecting his turf. You lost a couple of good coaches, uh, of assistant coaches, uh, between last season and this season. And I think that's a compliment to the Dallas Cowboys. When we are successful, in any area, we're going to lose good people, but you attract good people as well. When you look at the notion of, of pro football, what surprises you about this game? What have you had to learn that you didn't know, as smart as you are, as much as you've read, as much as you knew, as many conversations you had when you're doing it? What did you find out? The thing that concerns me the most is my biggest surprise in pro football, and for that matter, in sports, and that is uh, uh, the 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 trend or not trend, but the tendency of sports to throw dollars at a problem. I don't think that's the answer. Uh, I think that we're going into a system in pro football that will exhibit that. Uh, you just don't win championships by going out and paying huge amounts of dollars. Uh, my goal is to be an example of not only winning, but winning in a way that within a certain framework is prudent. And uh, I reflect that in my negotiations, and we reflect that in the way we conduct our business. You were also have been called on by the commissioner to sit on some committees. The television revenues and, and what's happening in television, how is that going to change? Well, I don't know that it's going to Well, there's some notion that NBC wants to get out of it. I don't know. I can't speak to NBC. But. Well, let, let me say this. That's a part of the negotiating process, and I can't speak to it either. But we're very optimistic about uh, where we're going with our new television agreement that we're negotiating right now. Our ratings uh, have never been more solid. Our game is at its peak. Uh, we know that we're the best, if you will, television vernacular product there is in sports. And so all of this, I think, is going to bode well for the NFL. Yeah. Great to have you here. Thank you. I thank you for allowing me to come here and, and be part of this, uh, this stadium. Good luck. I've had some great Sunday. I've had some great moments out yeah. here. I went to boo school out here, though, my first year, but other than that, it's been yeah. fabulous. And then to come here on Sunday and to know your team had won and be able to go down there uh, and be on that field and hear the applause of these people who, through thick and thin, and love the Cowboys. You know, and to Joe, know it's your team and, and your moment. Well, it's a great feeling. It reminds me, though, of a conversation I had with Jimmy Johnson uh, about four years ago. Yeah. And we were comparing another team's young players, all of the draft picks they had with us and having a great quarterback. And he responded and said, give them all the players, give them all the draft picks, give them the quarterback too. We're going to win because we're the Dallas Cowboys. We believe that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jerry Jones, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys. Jim Nance is here. We'll talk about uh, the NFL this season with this premier CBS sports broadcaster. Back in a moment.